Hey there, champions. Welcome back to another Read Aloud. Tonight we're reading Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. We're on chapter six, which is called Fang's Hit, Fang Hits Town. Fang Hits Town. And we're on part two. Here we go. When we reached the examining room, Fudge was sitting in the big chair. He had a towel around his neck and he looked all ready for action. Dr. Brown was showing him lots of little things and explaining what he does with each one. Fudge kept nodding, but he wouldn't open his mouth. Ah, Peter, Dr. Brown said when he saw me. Would you open your mouth so I can count your teeth? That's what he tells little kids he's doing, counting their teeth. Little kids will believe anything. I went along with Dr. Brown's joke. I opened my mouth very wide, much wider than when I'm the, when I'm the real patient. He put his mirror in and said, Wonderful teeth, just beautiful. A regular chip off the old block. Such a shame your brother can't open his mouth the way you do. Can't so, Fudge said. No, Dr. Brown told him. You can't open your mouth nearly as good as Peter. Can so, see? Fudge opened his mouth. No, I'm sorry, Fudge, Dr. Brown said. It's still not as good as Peter. So Fudge opened his mouth really wide. Count teeth, he said. Count Fudgy's teeth. Well, Dr. Brown pretended to think about it. Count, Fudge shouted. Well, Dr. Brown said again, scratching his head. I guess as long as you're here, I might as well count your teeth. So he checked Fudge's mouth. When he was through, Fudge said, see, see, just like Pita. Yes, Dr. Brown said, smiling. I can see that. You're just like Peter. He gave me a wink. I liked the way Dr. Brown tricked Fudge into opening his mouth. So when he was through examining him, I whispered, couldn't you make Fudge some false teeth until his grown-up ones come in? No, he'll just have to wait, Dr. Brown said. But he looks like he has fangs, I told him. You'd better not say that in front of your mother, Dr. Brown said. I know it. She's not too big on fangs. Dr. Brown thanked me for helping him. My mother made another appointment for Fudge. The nurse kissed my brother goodbye, and we left. That wasn't so bad, was it, Peter? My mother said. Could have been worse, I admitted. We headed for Bloomingdale's, where we got our shoes. There are five salesmen in the children's shoe department. Two of them my mother doesn't like. She thinks they don't measure my feet carefully that all they care about is selling shoes, even if they don't have the right sizes in stock. The other ones, my mom thinks are okay. There's one she likes a lot. He's funny. He usually makes me believe that the right shoe goes on the left foot, or that Fudge's shoes are really for me. Anyway, when Mr. Berman waits on us, buying shoes is almost fun. Today, Mr. Berman spotted us right away. He always remembers our name. Well, if it isn't the Hatcher boys, he said. In the flesh, I told him. Fudge opened his mouth for Mr. Berman. See, all gone. His teeth, my mother explained to Mr. Berman. He knocked out his top two front teeth. Well, congratulations, Mr. Berman said. That calls for a celebration. He reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out two lollipops. He handed one to me and one to Fudge. And I'm gonna stop there. Um, I think we'll be able to, oh no, maybe not. I was gonna say maybe finish it in the next read. Maybe two more and then we'll be done with this chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, chapter or that part of that chapter. We'll see what happens next at the store. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful night. Sleep well, sweet dreams, and I will see you all next time. Good night.